right, this morning we are going to change the coolant in the 14 Forerunner. Got the pink from Toyota. Uh, I actually bought that and had it shipped from Walmart. It was five bucks a gallon cheaper than Toyota. Uh, we're gonna have to pull this out so we can get to the radiator cap. We're gonna have to empty this. Behind here, the way I'm gonna do this, and behind this flap, passenger side, turn your wheel, hard driver, and get this off. You'll see on the engine block, there's a drain in here. I'll show that to you in a bit. And then under here, on the radiator, I'm gonna drop the pan here. There's a petcock, a la Ronnie the limo driver. For those of you that know that long story, uh, that will drain that. I'm just gonna drain both of these and I'm gonna use the Harbor Freight pump tubes to drain them directly into the oil drainage pan that I have and attach to the other parts here. So I'm gonna take this off first pop the cap off and I'm going to work on the driver's side to get the rubber flap off and then I'm going to do I am just going to come back here and shit okay get the top off pop that now on the Lexus GX if you've seen that video when I did that flush petcock was on driver's side so I dropped this it's four bolts takes two seconds and you can see down here there is the radiator petcock. Put those Harbor Freight tubes on it from the pump. Gonna run it out into the oil drainage container in a second. This over here on the block, as you can see right over there. Super easy, has a nozzle that comes out. And put the tube on there. And then that is a 10 millimeter bolt. I don't know the torque specs. I'm just going to feel it when I pop it off and feel it when I put it back on. And then, of course, be able to check it for leaks. So what I drain out is what I'm going to put in. I am not going to flush it with distilled water. because I don't want to dilute anything that's in there. So I'm going to start the draining. Okay, the radiator is empty. I dumped it into clear a gallon straight out of the radiator just so you can see it's not very dirty by any means but now we're gonna do the engine block and we're gonna see how that rolls all right got that hose on there got it loosened up with the 10 mil <clears throat> and you can see it's draining into there these things don't drain fast and I'm not gonna open it too much because I don't want it to just blast all over the engine block in my garage floor but that is what's going on so far. And then, of course, <clears throat> what we're going to do, if you haven't got one of these yet, is this tool. Get that off of Amazon, and I'll show you what goes on with that after this. All right, that's what came out of the engine block. So a little less than two gallons total is what come in, it came out. So I'm gonna use the pump down there. Get the rest of that out, seal everything up, put everything back together, and then start filling it. Okay, so for the fluid in here, cool thing about this is you can just start filling it and then we're gonna let it run in a while. This is my second gallon, but you're gonna to have to burp it. So, I hear it gurgling in there. See it gurgling in here. Eventually, it's gonna fill up. And I'm gonna to have to add I turn it on and let it burp. I'll film that in a bit too. Okay. Yeah, I was running. Cleaned it up. Had no bubbling. Filled the overflow. Oh. Make 
sure that's hand tightened down there. And then come to here. Residual from before. That's tightened fairly well. And just gonna push these bad boys back in. All right. That's how you change the fluid without a flush just under two gallons of fluid keeping the rest for overflow.